Okay, Bismillah ar Okay, folks, welcome back. We are having a, another look at this paper. We've done this some uh, a while back. It's the 2011 uh, Test A QCA paper. Okay, let's have a look at that. Right. Okay, okay. Now, so this is calculated and not allowed. Let's move on. Let's get started here. Question number right. Question number one. Holly made a number using these digit cards. Okay, that's good. That's wonderful. Okay. Uh, the hundred digit is greater than four. Okay. Holly's number is odd. What number did Holly make? So let's have a look. It says here that the hundreds digit is greater than four. So we have our units, tens, and hundreds. So this number can't be four. So if you put a four, then cross it out. So it can't be the four there. And it says that the number is odd. So if the number is odd, an odd number always ends in an odd number. Okay, the end digit is an odd number. Now we got four is even number. 8 is an even number and 5 is a? Odd. So it has to be a 5 here. And it can't be a 4 here, so the only position left of the 4 is there. Because it can't be in the hundreds. So the only other position is 4 is going to be there. So the only number that's left is 8. So based on the information they've given us, that is the only possible answer we can have. Okay, if you got that right, give yourself a tick and as well mark all the digits in the right place. If it's wrong, please. Uh, mark it wrong and put the right answer next to it. Are we happy with that so far? Yeah. yeah. Good. Write one number from each circle to make the calculation correct. So something time by something, take away something is nothing. Now, I'm going to put little brackets here to indicate that this part here, these two parts here, must be the same as this part. Because in order to have something, take away something, give you nothing, they must both have the same value then. Like, for example, 5 take 5 is nothing. And 10 take 10 is nothing like that. So these two, these two must have the same value as this. But when you multiply them, it gives the same value as that one number here. So, for example, if we chose, for example, 5 times by 6, for example. 5 times by 6 will give us a total of 30. So if you, if you make 30 here, then the other number must be 30 as well. Because 30 take away 30 is Zero. Okay, so that must put 30 in here. Mm -hmm. So that's one possible answer. That's not all the answers. Or we five. could have somebody said 5 times 8. Is that right? Four um, times 8. Okay, let's, let's choose a different color. And choose a different color. So we had 5 times 8. You said 4 times 8. We can't five. do 4 times 8. Because there's no 32 in the third circle. I know. 5 times 8. So we could also have 5. Nine. Time by 8, and that gives you 40, 40. and then you minus the 40. So that's another possible solution. And that's you could also have the 8 and the 5 in, in the other order as well, and the 6 and the 5. That's, no, I'm, I'm sorry, no, the numbers have to be in that order. Pardon me. Uh, as we've written them down in that exact order 5 times by 6 minus 30, or 5 times by 8 uh, minus 40, because the numbers are particular to the circles. Okay, that's lovely. Let's move on to the next question. Okay, class six, collect litter from a park. Class six, collect uh, litter from a park. Okay, so we have here, what do you call this thing? Uh, Picto. Picto. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, lovely. So you got one bottle represents 100 bottles, uh, one can represents 100 cans, and one like parcel represents 100 bags. Okay, how many bottles have class 6 collected? 100. So let's have a look. We have 100, 200, 300, 400. That's half a bottle, so 50. half of 100 is 50. Well done. So the bottle would then be equal to 450. 450. Well done. Excellent answer. How many? Now here comes a, how many more bags than cans? So let's have a look at the cans 100, 200, 300, 400. 25. That's a, why? Because that's a quarter of the picture. So that's 425 over here. 
And how many candles were there? One, two, three. So what, what calculation what calculation do we do here? Oh, did you get that right? Yep. Yeah. No. Okay. So far, everything correct. Okay, is it now? Yeah. Good. Okay, number four. Dev has five coins. He has one pound sixty altogether. Remember, five coins. So you can't, for example, have a three p coin and seven p coin because there's no such thing. So you have to be careful. Yeah. Write what the five coins could be. So let's have it. We've got three possible solutions in the mark scheme. So Mr. Carson, you give me one solution first of all. Go on, off you go. One pound. So we can have a one pound coin, correct? And then? 10p. You could have 10p. Another 10p. And then another 10p. And 220p. And then 220p. Okay, now I want somebody else to give me a second solution. And okay, Mr. Kamal, you give me, let me change color here now to indicate second solution. Okay, Mr. Kamal, off you go. 50p. Okay, so we're starting with 50p, and then? 50p. And then another 50p, and then? 20p. How many of them? Three. Three of them. Okay, for the last combination, I'm going to use a different color. So that's the second possible answer. Mr. What's up? Ilyas. Ilyas. Mr. Ilyas, let me just change color, please, young man, a moment. Okay, right. Mr. Ilyas, give me the third combination. 50. So you have 50p. Plus 50p. Plus 50p. You can't have 30p because uh, yeah. there's no 30p coin. Uh, yeah. coins. Okay, go on. We can have another 50p. Whoops, okay, hang on one second. Hang on a second, 50p, and then another 10p. 5p, and then another because you've got to use five coins. So you can't use three 50s and 10, and you have one coin less. So, then are the three possible solutions that we could have. If you've got any one of those three right in any order, then give yourself one mark yes. and a pat on the back. Okay, here are here are six shapes on a square grid. What a horrible color that gray. You know, you want a gray. Okay, write the letters of all the shapes that are squares. So all the letters are sh is this a square? Yeah. Yes, that's a square. Is that one a square? No. And that one? No. Uh, that one? No. What about D and E? Yeah. Are you happy with A D and E? Yeah. yeah. So A comma D and E. A, okay, so that will give us answers. We quickly move on. Okay, come on. Okay, let's see if we can finish this. Okay, now. Question number six. Joe, uh, can we see that last clearly on the board? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Joe has a box of 72 chocolates. I Okay, he gives 18 of the chocolates to his friends. How many chocolates are left in the box? So what what do we do? How do you do that, Come on, This thing is nice and clearly. What did you do? So you start off first of all with, and then, okay, take away 18. Now, can you go through it with us, please, step by step? How do we actually do that? Because we're not using calculator. So what do we do? We start at the, start at the two. Two take away eight. We can't. You can't do that, and then you have to make one from seven, one from seven, and then put one. So that becomes? Four, and then six, eight, one, five, 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 and then six, eight, one, we to get five minutes each. So how many minutes has she given them? Uh, Fifty minutes she's given away. Okay. Okay, and then she has thirteen left over. So if you want to work out how much she started with, what do we do? We have to add what she gave to what she had left over, and that gives us how much? So how much do you have at the start? Are we happy with that? That makes sense. Okay, excellent. Okay, question. We okay with this? Yep. Put the pencil down before you start this half in case. <laughs> yeah, you got it in point into math. Okay, question number seven. Holly takes for half an hour to walk for a walk from home to school. She arrives at school at 825. 
at what time did she leave home? So what we need to do here is do 8, 25, and we need to minus a half an hour. Okay, 30 minutes. Now if you do 8, 25 minus 25 minutes, we get exactly to 8 o'clock, isn't it? And then 8 o'clock, go back by another 5 minutes. That was yours, what? 7.55. Okay. Okay, Mr. Kamal is very excited. He's got that question right. Okay, so far. Okay, excellent. 7.55. Okay, next. Dev leaves school at half past three. He arrives home at ten past four. How long did it take him to get home? Let's just quickly draw a line first of all. So half past three is three thirty. And the next major time is four o'clock. But he actually reached home at ten past four. Four ten. This is called timeline. We're just having a look at exploring the, the time the timeline. Okay, right, let's have a look. Right, so from three thirty to four o'clock, that's gonna be how many minutes? Thirty minutes. From ten minutes. From four o'clock to four ten is ten minutes. Okay, right. Another ten minutes. Okay, remember Mr. Kamal, I'm sitting right in front of you, I'm at the end of a big hall here, so you don't have to shout out, you know. Oh, I'm wearing glasses at the moment, so I'll be wearing a hearing aid. You made me deaf. So 30 at 10, but so, yeah, it continues <laughs> violent. So the answer here is? Yeah, 40 minutes. Okay, put your hands up if you got that question right. The 40 minute one. Put your hands up. Okay. Okay, right, let's move on to the next question. I've got quite a few pages to do. Question number eight. Okay, the four sums below can be completed using only the numbers one to eight. Uh, can we make it slightly bigger? Oh, okay. Seven and three. I don't want to. This is on the wrong page. Okay, yeah, yes. I'm just trying to make the page a bit bigger. So, uh, that's more beautiful than this. Okay, the four sums below can be completed using only the numbers one to eight. Okay, Mr. Kamal, put your hand down, please. Use each number once to complete the sums. So we have 1 add 5 add 6 is 12. Now we're going to start with the 2. So we're going to add 2, add something, add something equals 12. So all the numbers are going to be 12. So we've got to think about... Seven. Now, if you start with 2, we need another 10. ten. If you start with 3, we need another... 10. No. 3 add 10 is 12. Seven. Three add seven is three no, add no, no. If you start with 10, how much more do we need to make 12? You know, listen to what I'm saying. You guys are answering something else. Nine. If you start with two, then thank you. Oh. I'm just thinking how much more we need. If you start with six, six. how much more do you need? Six. So these two numbers here must be equal to ten. ten. And these two numbers here must be equal to nine. And these two numbers here must be equal to six. six. So let's have a look at what we can do. Seven. To make ten, let's change colour here a bit. Uh, Seven and three. Okay, all right. Mr. Kamal, you need to stop shouting out, please, seriously. Because you just give me out all the answers and not give us a chance. So 7 at 3 or 3 at 7, in any order. We can't have that in any order. Yeah, 8 at 1. And the next one, Mr. Kamal, can you please start shouting out? 8 at 1, and don't say anything else now. Let's have Zenab. Zenab. Um, 6 at 4 is 10, and then at 2. So we can do 2 at 4 or 4 at 2. That yeah. be. So that'll give you 2 marks. Yeah, great. Okay, question number 9. Let's move on. Without any further delay, let's move on. Mr. Kamal, you need to. Okay, I'm telling that for the third, fourth time in about you know, less than a minute. Okay, do you understand? Stop shouting at the answer, Mr. Kamal. Here is a part of a number sequence. The numbers in the sequence increase by 25 each time. So from here to here, add 25, add 25, add 25, add 25. Circle so all the numbers below that will appear in the sequence. Now, we are going up in the 25 times table actually, because 50 is 25 times by 2, 75 is 25 times 3. We're actually going up in the 25 times table. Mm -hmm. So now all the numbers which are in the 25 times table, it won't be this one, will it? No. It won't be 255. Five. It'll be numbers that are 25, 50s, 75s, and the hundreds and stuff. What about 650? Is that good? Yes. Because that's got a 50 in it at the end. What about 35? Yeah. No. No. What about a full hundred, like nine hundred? Yeah. yeah. What about nine nine five? No. No. So just you gotta get both of them right for one mark.
Okay, I've lost my mouse. 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 Okay, right, let's see. Oh, here it is. I think here it comes. Oh, there you go. Found it. Okay. Okay, question number 10. Shade two squares and one triangle to make this design symmetrical about the middle line. You can't really give me the answer by shouting. I don't know how you're going to give me the answer verbally. You have to do it. But you mean you're going to shout out the answer and it'll be a common word? Allah Akbar. Mr. Mr. Kamal. Mr. Kamal. Mr. Kamal. Okay, let's see if I can try to draw the shape. So then here comes the first part. So you should have like a rectangle there. Okay, and then we need a little triangle. Do we have any triangle shape? Uh, triangle drawing shape. Uh, let's try that one. So then we have a triangle. The triangle should go from here to there to there to there. Okay, lovely. Let's just hope that does it. That's it. Okay, right. Right, let's get ourselves a pen. Okay, give me one moment, please. So, something I'm going to try to shade it in now. Okay, so we got the shape here. Whoa, a little bit there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's try it And this triangle here. Okay, I think I made it more messy than I needed to. Okay, but you got those two rectangles there, those two squares and that triangle there, and that will give it the answer. I don't know what that is. That looks like something crazy there. Okay, right. Well, I think we take the shade out, it looks better. So we can see the it's that basically. I'll try to right, let's move on to the next question. Okay, right. So about Mr. Kamal here. Yeah? Number eleven, let's change his colour. If I write the correct sign, equal, greater than, or less than. So, now 9 times by 3 will give us... 27, uh, and 8 times by 4 is... 9 times 3 is... 8 times 4 is... 9 times 3 is... 8 times 4 is... 9 times 5 by 3 is... 8 times 5 by 4 is... Nice, okay, four. Now, let's now put the symbols in. Let's change to a blue. Now, we need some symbols. So 27 is less than 32, 6 is greater than 4, 12 is equal to 12, and 3 is greater than 2. Try to make sure your symbols fit in the shape. Okay, Mr. Can you mark them? So I've got one Congratulations, Mr. Kamal, and you're getting one wrong. I've got one wrong. So none wrong, that's become also one wrong. Okay. Right, question number 12. Dev and Joe each buy a book. Dev pays with a £5 note and gets £1.5 change. Joe's book costs £7. How much more does Joe's book cost than Dev's book? Now, let's have a look. We have Joe and we have yes. Dev. Now, it says here, that Joe's book costs £7. So Joe's book, we know how much it costs. That's not a mystery. Now it tells us that Dev pays £5 note and gets £1.5 change. So we've got to work out, we've got to work out the cost of Dev's. And then we've got to work out how much more it is. Okay? We've got to work out how much his book costs and then how much more. Two things to work out. So let's work out how much Dev paid. So we've got £5 and we minus £1 and five pence. So, that's my pound. Three pound nine. Okay, Mr. Kamal, please stop shouting out. Yeah, your name's going to be in this video, all the video. The whole world's going to see the how much I've told you to stop shouting. Yeah, five pound minus one pound five. Now, the way we do that is you minus the one pound. Five pound minus one pound is four pound. Four pound minus the five P will give us? Three pound ninety-five. Okay, the one I told to stop shouting is still shouting. Three pound ninety-five. So we know now that Dev's book is three pound ninety five. 
The question goes, how much more? So let's change color for the second part of the question. So we're going to do 7 pound minus 3 pound 95 and 7 pound. Let's do 7 pound minus 3 pound first of all. Well, actually, we can do 7 pound take with 4 pound. What's 7 pound take with 4 pound? Uh, three pound. pound, and then add the you took away an extra ninety five p, extra five p, which anyway. So what will be the answer? So it'll be three pound and five p. So we're gonna add them back on. Yeah. yeah. So seven pound minus three pound ninety five, because three pound ninety five add five p is four pound, and add another three pound and seven pound. So you're gonna add three pound. P. And that's the end. Yeah. Okay. Don't worry about it. I'm doing this. I'll show you that. Okay. Here comes the next uh, set of questions. Question number thirteen. Which one? Yeah. Three pound five. You, if you get that one, you get two marks. Did you get three pound ninety-five for the first part? Yeah. So you just have one then, if you've got the second part wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, here are some shapes on a one centimeter square grid. What is the perimeter of shape A? Now, first of all, put your hand up if you know what the perimeter means. Let's have Zenith. Explain to us, the class, what is the word perimeter? I know. Now, your name is that Zenith though? Okay, if you can imagine Kamal's name being Zenith, that would be really horrendous. Go on, then. No, um, the perimeter is the outside of the shape. When you say the outside, you need somebody to give me a more specific answer. The length of the outside. That's what the length, not the outside shape. The outside shape means anything. Okay. So the distance around the outside of the shape. So let's have a look. Let's start from one corner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Fourteen centimeters. Fourteen. Write the letter of the shape that has the smallest area. E. Okay, right. Well done, that's wrong. D. Okay. Now, when we're talking about area, we're now talking about the number of squares that it contains inside. Now, let's have a look. Let's, have a, let's change color here again. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. This has an area of six centimeters squared. Okay. Over this one here. One, two. Three, four, five, six, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three. Okay, no, hang on a second. That's one. Oh, hang on a second. That's right. That's really good. We have one, two, three full ones over here, and these two here make four, and that makes five, and that makes six, sorry. So that's six, mm. and that one's clearly six. So, so the answer is C. Yeah. C's got five, all the rest got six. How's it eight? Yeah. Okay, oh. question number 14. Question number 14. Joe places some apples on a weighing scale. The pointer shows the mass of the apples. He takes away you want to I'm just trying to do something here. I don't really want to do that. I want to do this. Okay, right, let's try and look. That's better. Okay, Joe places some apples on a weighing scale. The pointer shows the mass of the apples. He takes away one apple, the mass falls down about 120 grams. Draw the pointer on its new position. Now, if we look at the scale, first of all, we need to work out that each little knot represents how many grams? 20. Well done. So 120 grams is going to be worth how many notches? Five. Six notches. So we've got to move the line six notches down. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we need a new line. Let me get a hold of a line. Okay, we've got a line here. And we're gonna go from here to there. Okay, so it should be 600 plus two little notches up. 
I'll be happy with that folks now, yes? Yep. Good. Okay, he takes away uh, one apple. Done that. Draw the pointer. So actually that one there, which I've drawn there, I've drawn in the wrong place. Pardon me folks, I was supposed to draw it over. Yeah. Yeah, but that was the working out, okay? Done. Okay, uh, yeah, done. We happy with that? Yeah. Move on to the next question. Number 15. Holly says one third of this shape is shaded. Is Holly correct? Now, there's a little bit of a trick in there. Because if you look at the first question, we got how many parts we have? Three. Two and? How many parts we have the first square? Um, two. Two, two squares. Uh, square split into two. This one, is this split? No. No. So what have they missed out? The split. Oh. They missed this line out? Okay. So they're just trying to play games with you. So they missed that line out. I'll put that line back in. Now let's count how many things are shaded now. So we now have two parts which are shaded out of how many parts altogether? Six. Six equal parts. Okay, two out of six. Okay, tell me who managed to get that part that right. Who managed to realize there's a trick in there? Uh, okay, hang on a second. So we have how many shaded now? Two. Two six. Now we need to simplify that down. Now when you simplify two six, we divide the top and bottom by the highest common factor, which is the biggest number that we divide into them. So two divided by two is? One. And six divided by two is? Three. So is she correct? No. Yes. yes. She's Please correct. Uh, Mr. Glasson, we are recording, yeah? Yeah, so can we just keep everything civil, please, yeah? yeah. So 2 6 becomes 1 third. So, you didn't mention that. Okay, so what did you mention then? How did you manage to get the 1 third? Explain that. Oh. Oh. Okay. Explain how you know. So we say here, but also uh, that's one way of looking at it. Another way is this: these two triangles make how many squares? If you add the two triangles together, how many squares they make? One square out of three squares. Uh, either way. That's why I did this. Yeah. So that's one explanation here. The second one is say, as we say, if add the two. Shaded triangles, we get one square. There are three squares in total. Are you writing this down, Zena? Yeah. You are, it doesn't look like it. Therefore, one out of three is shaded. So we can have two approaches. We can just do very simple and say we're going to add the two triangles together, make one square. There's three squares in total. So one shaded out of three makes one third. Or we can show some maths and. Do I have to write that down? I really yeah, explain how you know. Yes, we need to write it down. I didn't really write it down. That's fine. That's no problem. Okay, right. Let's have a look at question number 16. Are you ready for number 16? Yeah. yeah? Yes. Okay. Well, should we have a break now? Yeah. yeah. Pause. Okay, we're live now, folks. Okay, question number 16. Number 16, this chart shows the famous snacks of some boys and girls. Girls? So the girls is the light color and the boys is the darker one. Number of children. So you got one bar stacked on top of another bar. So the bottom one is the boys' bar and the top one is the girls' bar. How many stacks were chosen by more girls than boys? So what we need here. We need to find which one the, t the top bar is bigger than the bottom bar. Mm -hmm. So that one, one, and two. So how many, the, how many snacks were there? How many snacks? Two. Two. How many more boys than girls chose raisins? Yes. So raisins, let's have a look. So the bottom one is the boys, which goes from here to there. Let's have a quick, quick arrow. Six. Okay, right. Just give me one moment, please, folks.
So we have the reasons for the boys is going to be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. We've got 11 boys, all right? Are we happy with the 11 boys? Yeah. So we've got 11 boys. Now the girls are going to be 1, add another 2, 4, so we've got how many girls do you have? 7. Because we've got 6 and the little one. So now we've got to do how many? So it's 11 minus 7. Okay, 11 minus 7 will give us? Oh. 3. 11 minus 7 is 3. If your name is Kamal. 4. 4. Okay, 4. Right, next question. Which snack was chosen by twice as many boys as girls? So if you look over here, the one we should be looking at is going to be the only one left that we can consider is the banana one. Let's double check that. So we got 10 chosen banana for, for boys and we got 2, 4, 5 for girls and that's the one. So the answer on the bottom is banana. 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 Okay, done? Are you happy with that? Yes. Yes. Okay, next one. Calculate 3.81 plus 18.3. This is an important question here because what's important is that some students will do the question like this. Let me show you the wrong way first. Are most students do it? No. Let me show you the wrong way first. So some students, they do like that. That is the wrong way of doing it because the decimal points need to line up. We don't line the numbers up, we line the points up. So this is the wrong way. So this is the right way now. What? Just, just, just watch. Line up the decimal points first of all. Whoops. Mm -hmm. What was it? Three dots? You soon find out. There's going to be one number, the other number, and the answer. Yeah. Oh. So we need to line up the decimal points. Keywords line them up. Here they are. Here's the line. So now we need to add them up. Okay. Are we okay, mister? Yeah. So we have one. Mr. Elias, are we okay? Yeah. One. Eight out of three will give us. 11, yeah. 8 add 4 will it give us now? 20. Oh, 8 add 4 is 22. <laughs> give me the answer. So the answer, the final answer for this is? 22. Dot. Can you say it properly please? 22. <laughs> okay. Uh, remember this is being recorded, yeah? So can we please stop behaving like that? 24. 22.11. Okay. You don't want to show the world how... Ignorant we are, we're going to show them how intelligent we are. Okay, number 18. Dev has three discs. Each disc has a 7 on one side and an 8 on the other side. He spins <coughs> all the discs and adds the three scores together. How many uh, different totals can he get using the three discs? So, let's have a look how we're going to approach that question. Let's move the page up a bit. Okay, here we go. Now, so we got this now. What could we get? It's got it's got uh, three no, three discs. Yeah. Now we got to think about the different combinations of the numbers we can get. So we can get, for example, an eight, an eight add a, or we could get a seven add a seven add a seven. Remember, we are adding the total totals here. Yeah? So that will give us two separate totals. Okay. Okay. So that's two totals. One and two. Now. Let's have a look at what other ways we can combine the numbers. Okay, go on then. Uh, Zana, if you don't, give me an answer. Go on, give me an answer then. Can we eight. can do 7, add 8, add? 7, seven. add 8. I can do 7, 7, eight. Oh, 8, 8, 7. Oh, 8, 7, 8. Yeah, but that will give you how many, how many totals? Only one, one total. Seven. There's different variations, yeah? So that will just give you one total. Yeah? Because you just add them in different order. It's the same thing. That's one more. Let's change color again and go for a different color now. And what other can we make anymore? So we had one seven and two eight, so we could have seven. two sevens oh. and one eight. Uh, eight. Whoa. Uh, that's supposed to be an eight, okay? Eight. Right. So now that will give you another total. So all those will give you just one total. We're just changing the order, so we're getting one total again and again. So how many totals have we got all together now? One, three, four, how many totals do we have? Four. We only get four totals, that's done. 
Next question. Let's move the page up a bit because we're losing top of the page. Oh, oh, that's lovely. Question number uh, nine. Uh, Mr. Rion, can you quickly copy down those answers or check your answers, please? Okay. Number 19. Number 19. 500 children started at a 20 kilometer sponsored cycle ride. This graph shows how far they cycled. So you have the number of children cycling here and you have the distance in kilometers. Okay, so this is the 20 kilometers. It starts zero, goes to 20. So this is the end of the race. At what distance were exactly half the children still cycling? Now, how many children did we start with? 500. Okay, let's do 500 divided by 2. What's 500 divided by 2? 250. 250. Excellent. 250. So we have to say at what distance were a half been cycling, a half been still cycling. So we've got to work out. Two, no, we've done 250. So let's get a line. Where's 250? Here. So we go across and we hit the graph and then we go down. Okay. Can anybody tell me what that value is? Oh. Go on, Mr. Mr. Rian. Tell us the value of that where the arrow is pointing to. Well done, Mr. Rian. Because 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. They're going up in twos. Are we happy with that, Zainab? Did we get that? So, uh, Zainab, did we get that? Yes. Okay. Uh, actually, Zainab, come on, Zainab. Mashallah. Come on, Zainab, come on, Zainab. I didn't. I don't okay. know. So, 250 is here. So, we go along here, go across, hit the graph, come straight down, and that gives you 16 here. Okay, did we get that? Yes. Yeah. Indicate. No. Yes. No. Okay, right. Can we please cut out the sound effects? It's not a, a Bollywood movie. This is a, a UK based. Not <laughs> Okay, shh. Calm down, folks. I know you expected. Estimate how many children complete the 20 kilometer cycle ride. Remember, what I said before 20 kilometers is here, so it finishes. So we need to go across from here to there. Let's get a different color. So let's go from here all the way across. And go to there, right? Can somebody tell me what kind of values they got for their answer for that? So we're talking about now. Remember, this is 180 here, and that's going to be 200. And that's going to be. Hang on a second. What does that look like? Zero, 50, 100, 150, and that's 200. So it's big. So give me some kind of idea of what kind of answer you got there, Zainab. Give me your answer, please, for that one. Hundred ninety. Hundred ninety is correct. What did you get? Uh, Two seventy. Okay, this is what the answer that you allowed. You allowed an answer between one eighty and two hundred and one ninety. How can it be two hundred and two hundred above it? How can two hundred be there and there? So that's the kind of range that the mark scheme is allowing you to have an answer. So anything between hundred and eighty and hundred ninety included hundred eighty and hundred ninety. Okay. Yes. If you got those lines missing. These ones are missing from your graph, put them in okay. rather than just watching the screen. Quickly put them in, Mr. Ilias. Okay, are we happy with that now? Yeah. Okay, so this answer, so uh, I mean, for example, we could just put it here 190, somebody said. But anything from 180 to 190, including those two numbers, would be an answer. So you could say 180, 181, 182, anything would be, all those numbers would be still correct. Okay, we're ready to move on to the next part. Yes. Are you happy with the, the red part and the green part? Yes. Yeah, so that's the end of the race. Maybe. Race. And, yeah, the, the number 20 kilometers here, go across. So we have end race. Yeah, you can if you want to. Okay, question number 20. Here are five number cards. Use four of the cards to complete these calculations. So now, 47 divided by something will give you an answer to base with 47, isn't it? Yep. So, so we can have to use which one is the answer? We can this number here 
has contained the number 47 in there, is that right? Yeah. So I have a feeling that this number will go where? There. There. Because we've done something to the 47 to make it into 0 0.47. But what did we do to it? Divided by 100. Well done. Because 47 divided by 100 is that. How do you get that? I'll show you. Move back two places. Just one point. Whoops. Yeah. You didn't, like, you didn't you, like that. You just move the four to the hundred. Okay, right. Mr. Carson, please keep the noises down. So 47 divided by 100, 0.47. Now, look at this number here. It's got 40.7, and that's also got the numbers 407 in it. So that's going to be part of our question. question. That's right. Part of the question. 4.07. Can you please make sure your number fits into the box? Mine's slightly big. Now, how do you make 4.07 into 40.7? What do you time by? 10. 10. Hey. So we use this card and this card. I got it. And we've used, okay, we use that card and we also use that card. So we didn't use all of them, but we used those four. Next question. We have 544 divided by 32. Now we can do this using long division technique. But I'm going to show you a nice easy way. Now, when I look at these numbers, these numbers are nice because they're nice, big, even numbers. What do even numbers definitely divide by? They definitely divide by? Two. two. Okay. Remember, Kamal, you're right in front of me, and I'm currently wearing glasses. I'm not wearing hearing aid. Soon, you're going to make me deaf, and I'll be wearing hearing aids. <laughs> yeah, so just keep your kind of volume down, please. Thank you, Mr. Kamal. You are a star in a reasonable price car. So what do we divide by first? <laughs> divide by two. Okay, what's 544 four divided by 2? Okay, what's half of 544? What is half of 544? Well, what's half of 500? 250. Okay, Mr. Kamal, again, please, can you stop shouting? Yeah. So, and then our half of 44 is 22. So, 250 at 22 will give us? Beautiful. Now, half of 32 will give us. What's half of 32? 18. Half of 32 30. will give. Okay, uh, I'm still waiting, folks. What's half of 32? That's getting more ridiculous. What's half of 32? Oh, what's half of 30? Yeah, half of 30 is 15, half of 2 is 1, 16 on the other. Okay, now, what do you realize by these numbers? These numbers, again, can be divided by 2. So we're going to keep on dividing by 2. It's called simplifying. To make life easy for ourselves, let's see how far we get with this. Because we know 2 will work. So 272 divided by 2. What's half of 272? 236. And what is half of 16? Uh, 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 wow, you guys are top mathematicians. You guys are top mathematicians. Okay, now, what can we divide them both by? Let's make the mathematics a little more quick and sharp enough now. The biggest number that we can divide into 136 and 8 would be what? What should we divide them by? Should we divide these by... 8, 10. 4. Divide by 8, 10, please. Well, divide by 4. Yes, divide by 4. Can you divide it by 10? Because it's just... Okay, well, let's choose from the bigger. Okay, right. Now, what's 8 divided by 4? Eight divided by four. Two. Two. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was the last one I did. Yeah. Two. Okay. Eight the next one. Eight. What is uh, one hundred thirty-six divided by four? Let's just do a quick calculation over here. Reality. Okay. That's zero. One. How many fours and twelve? So fours and, because fours and twelve there. Two three. What about three? Twelve remained one. How many fours and sixteen? Oh, yeah. Four. Okay, lovely. We nearly finished this long journey. So 34 divided by 2 will give us a nice final answer of? 34. Yeah, 34 divided by 2 is still 34, huh? Oh, I was just copying that. Okay, lovely. Yes, Ida. Good Bus. Okay, question number 22 now. Let's move on to the next question. We're running out of time at the moment. That question I did put you in the
Okay, question number 32. 32A. So it says here, this cube has shapes drawn on three of its faces. The cube is turned to look like this. It's turned over basically. Draw and shade the missing shapes. So let's have a look. Let's get our line. Uh, let's get from here to there. Okay, and let's get our pencil. So we should have this triangle here shaded. No. Oh. I knew it. Oh, didn't it the other way? Uh, uh, then I then it literally it Okay, is that one? And then we need uh, that we need that little circle in the corner, and that will be. Uh, Oops, uh, it's possibly no, sir. I I okay, right. Can we please, yeah? Comments? Can we do? Can we limit the comments, please? Okay, okay, this is a recorded lesson, yeah. Okay, this is supposed to be a nice little curve there in the corner. Okay. Right, that's supposed to be like a quarter of a circle. It's actually not looking the way I would like it to look. So let's try it one more time. Okay, okay that's it. I'm going to leave it there. And that should be shaded. That's it. I can't do it any better than that. Thank you very much. Let's move on. Okay, question number 23. It says A and B are joined by straight line. Let's make this slightly bigger. Let's make it even more bigger. And even more bigger. Yeah. Oops, that's what I'm not supposed to be there. A massive essence. Okay, let's, let's make it nice and massive. <laughs> massive. Massive. Oh, okay, here we go. So A and B are joined. Uh, a and uh, B are joined by a straight line of coordinate axes. The dots on the line are equally spaced. Shh. All right. Let's let's now interpret that. Are we ready? Yes. Lovely. Now it says ten ten. Okay, don't mix up ten ten with ben ten. <laughs> now ben ten is something completely different. And ten so that first ten means ten along the x. The second ten means ten along the y. Okay. Okay, let's do another one of these. And then you do another one. Okay. All right. So now, if you look over here, this twenty-two represents. Oops, I wasn't meant to do that. Really. It's a bit naughty. Then you go like that. Okay, that's okay. Right. That's now that's 22 represents 22 along the x. The second number coordinate represents the height. 30. Now, we have to see how many gaps do we have. So if we look at it now, uh, I'm going to use uh, straight lines to indicate that. Let's change color once more. Okay, let's have a look. Watch this. Blue line here. Oops, uh, slightly, slightly. Oops. It's busy. Okay, there's that one. So, what is it called busy for? Okay, let's. Uh... Okay, I don't know what. <laughs> okay, just give me a moment, the folks. Just struggling a bit with the technical. Okay, right. Sure. Sorry about that, folks. Okay, right, let's try that again. It's going up. Okay, no, 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 no. okay, Mr. Kumar, please, your comments uh, at the moment are not appreciated. Yeah, but I don't know if we do some kind of like funny stuff. I thought we were doing a math lesson, not like a comedy channel. Lovely, alhamdulillah, that will do. Okay, shh, shh, shh. okay, let's just cut, let's cut out all the extra ch noise. Right, let's have a look. Extra ch So how many equal spaces do we have now? One, two, three, and four. four. So we've got 22 take away 10. It's 12. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So that means each gap is worth 3. So 10 and the next number here will be 
13. 10 add 3 is 13. So that would be 13. Now similarly, if you draw lines along here, I'm just going to do a quick one here, quick line here, quick line here. We got between 30, whoa, I wasn't meant to do that. Whoa. Between 30 and 20, we have, what do we have? 20. And we divide it by how many gaps? 1, 2, 3, 4. So 20 divided by 4 is? <coughs> 20 divided by 4 is? 5. Okay, took the time. So 10 at 5 is? 15. 15. So the coordinate for C is? If you write it down on the bottom answer, what is it? What is the coordinate? What's the coordinate for C then? Uh, we've written one the graph. So what is the coordinate for Z? Thirteen. Now coordinates has two 15, parts: an x part and a y part. Fifteen. Thirteen. Okay, you've given me back to front. You oh, gave me 13, the y. Fifteen. Well done. You always get the x coordinates first. Thirteen and fifteen. Fifteen. That's how we answer that particular question. So you need to think about the okay, there's two, symmetry. There's two separate marks. Yeah, one for each one. Well, one for the top question. Okay. Okay, the next question, um, I'm not going to be able to do that on here because I don't have the, the software to do angles and stuff. But you have to basically measure the 75 degrees at 1.2 and you can almost get that question okay. Yay. for the moment. Okay, is that, is that, is that the last page? Yeah, yeah, that's the last page. Yeah, but yes. No, one more page. That one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's the last page. Okay, Joe has two strips of card. I don't do that. I do I do that. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have that. I don't have this. So it's on this computer. Okay. Sorry about that. So it all continues. Okay. Right, there we go. Joe has two strips of card. Each strip is 36 centimeters long. Okay, now if you look at it, 36. Now, how many, little how many pieces do we have here? Four. Okay, remember Kamal, I'm sitting right in front of you. You do not need to shout. Okay, 36. You know, in the, you know, like in the football pitch or something, on the football ground, you shout, you're 18. 36 divided by 4 is? Oh, 36 divided by 4 is 9 centimeters. So each one of these is? 9. Nine. Nine. Lovely. And this is 36 divided by how many? 36 divided, divided by how many here? 4. Is it 4 here as well? 3. Right. What's 36 Nine. divided by 3? Uh, 12. Excellent. That's 12 and 12 and 12. Because Joe uses the two strips to make the shape. Yeah. It goes here. What is the total length of Joe's shape? Now, if you start from here to here, it matches up here, isn't it? What is the distance between there and there? What is it? It is? 12. And then what's the, this shape here? From there to there, it is? No, it's not. Nine. 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 And from there to there is? Nine. And the last one? Nine. So it's going to be 12, 12. add Nine. times Nine. by 3. Which is 12 add Nine. 27. 12 so add 27. 30, 30, 30, 30. I can't see. Oh, yeah. Okay. And that is the end of this paper. Thank you very much for so joining us. So you need. To, yeah, I can go back. Let me just stop the video and second go back. And then we can uh, please work out your marks. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Oh, you make a mess of it. Don't open it. Yeah. 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 Okay, thank you very much for joining us on this video, please. I hope this helps everybody with this half preparation.